Yo, what is up guys, Duke DC here, welcome to another video, you already know, hit that subscribe button if you've been loving the content recently, and comment down below, what is your favorite 125? Now let's jump into the video. Yo, what is up guys, Duke DC here, welcome to another video, we are over here at Blackman's Cycle Center, just north of Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. As always, this video is brought to you by Rollick. Rollick is a company connecting consumers like you and me to a network of certified dealers like Blackman's Cycle Center to provide the most transparent buying experience when it comes to ATVs, side-by-sides, RVs, and of course motorcycles, like this 2019 Honda Grom. How long have you guys been waiting for me to get on a Grom? Well, now it's time. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> this sounds unbelievable. This is outrageous. This is no normal 2019 Honda Grom. No, the gentlemen at Blackman's Cycle Center have hooked it up. Come on, Honda Grom, top speed run, let's go. 46, 47, 46. Oh, that can't be all she's got. Wow, that MGP pipe sounds so good. 55, 56, 55. Oh, 56 miles per hour is the official, unofficial Duke of DC top speed on the Honda Grom. Holy guacamole. I don't even know if I'm gonna get a word in on this vlog because of how good that pipe sounds. So let's jump right into the specs. So we've got a single cylinder 125cc, four speed transmission, it's one down, three up. And the suspension, we've got non-adjustable inverted 31 millimeter forks with 3.9 inches of travel in the front. In the rear, we have a single shock, 4.1 inches. Braking is being done on a 220 millimeter single disc with two piston caliper in the front and 190 millimeter disc in the rear. ABS is optional for this year, it's an additional $200. We've got a seat height of 30 inches, which comes in lower than the competition on the Kawasaki Z125. We've got a fuel capacity of 1.5 gallons and a remarkable 134 miles per gallon. We've got a curb weight of 229 pounds, so again, this is a very, very light motorcycle, and all of that comes in at $3,399. For any of you horsepower freaks out there, this thing is producing 9.7 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 8 pound-feet of torque at 5,500. All right, guys, so we're going to take a second from the full throttle madness of this Honda Grom. So look at this. I am on a, <laughs> a lime green 2019 Honda Grom. This has got to be the most popular 125cc bike at the very least in the United States right now. I'm sure it's not in the rest of the world. That might uh, still be the Super Cub. Who knows which Honda is producing in 2019 in the United States, which is very interesting. This is the third of a three bike lineup that Honda is producing for the 125 category, which just goes to show the popularity of this segment in the United States. It's grown so much. I mean, Grom Gang is real. Grom Gang is strong. You guys saw that I just rode the Kawasaki Z125 in another video. Now, I'm going to compare this Honda Grom to that bike very, very minorly, and that's because this is no standard Honda Grom. No, this has an MGP pipe on it. It's got uh, aftermarket bars, aftermarket levers. It has an aftermarket seat on it. It's got LED turn signals, and this is all done by the boys over at Blackman Cycle Center. So if you are north of Philadelphia and you're looking for a Honda Grom, not only do they sell stock ones, because they most certainly would sell you a stock Honda Grom if you'd like, but they will also sell you one that is tricked out like this. The beauty of this bike is most certainly in what you can do with it, the aftermarket ability of it. Like, yes, it's interesting stock, but it's way more interesting uh, with a little bit of aftermarketness on it. And what really, all you're doing there is you're adding your personality to this, which would be, you know, a motorcycle that sells really well. So a lot of people have it. You want it to be personal to you? Well, guess what? You can do that. So I just got off of the Honda Monkey. So I'm actually gonna kind of use that as like a, like a comparison point. The Honda Grom is a lot sportier than the Monkey. That's a pretty obvious statement. I mean, the turn-in feels a little bit sportier. The suspension feels tighter. The brakes, yeah, actually the brakes feel a little bit better. I wouldn't want to tug on the, the uh, brake lever when you don't have to. Top speed run. 
46, 47, 50, 51, 52, 53. That's as fast as we're gonna go. That's as fast as we're gonna go today on this thing. Those brakes were great. You've got a much easier to read digital display up front than on the Monkey, that's for sure. They definitely got this one right when it comes to the glass that's used there. There's no glare from the sun. There's not a whole lot of sun out right now, but even in this much uh, light, I wasn't able to see the Monkey's speedo and uh, information, so that's good. This is, it's like literally rolling thunder. Those llamas are not happy right now. I just pissed off a bunch of, a bunch of llamas. to ring it out. I need to get used to that. She's got a peppy little throttle and a peppy little clutch. For the rest of this journey, we are going to uh, let the bike do the talking. Oh, except for the, except for the llamas. I'm sorry, llamas. craziest statistics that I most certainly need to talk about here in comparison to the Z125 especially which gets like I think 80 miles per gallon or like plus or minus five around that range this bike gets hundred and thirty four miles per gallon that is absolutely that's incredible that's incredible you're never gonna fill this up and when you do it's gonna cost you all of like four dollars and you're gonna ride for 150 200 miles so what an astonishing thing when it comes to, first off, low entry costs, you know, sub four grand, and then you're talking about filling up the tank for a couple dollars and riding it forever, you're probably looking at insurance rates that are a joke. Like, I bet you they're $12, $15 a month on average, if that. So that's what, $150, $200 a year? It is a very economical and friendly entry level bike. and. It's funny too because I never really consider the Honda Grom an entry level motorcycle. I just don't. I actually consider it a motorcycle for people who have owned bikes before but are looking for something different. Just plain different. Like this is, it's, it's a class of its own. It's like, it's like the pocket bike class has come up to the forefront of motorcycle class. It's like super sport, naked bikes, adventure bikes, pocket bikes now. They're everywhere and they're doing such a great job they're selling like crazy there's a huge aftermarket's parts catalog for these things they're relatively reliable i mean geez it's still a honda it's a single it's going to be easy to replace things and repair and maintenance is going to be inexpensive there's really not a lot to this that is bad the only thing is that it's not you know crazy powerful motorcycle you're going to top out at about 50 55 miles per hour downhill and you really shouldn't take it on the highway, even though, well, we all saw how that went. So this bike is really interesting because it's part of what Honda is now giving you three options to choose from in their 125 category. They're essentially saying if you want this kind of modern bike that we've been making only for a few years, then go with that. That's the Grom. If you want this bike that we made a long time ago for a little bit, then go with the Monkey. If you want a bike that is like ubiquitous in the entire world, that has sold hundreds of millions, or like tens of millions, then go with the Super Cub. Now, and each one of those, you know, they're gonna have different riding characteristics, they're gonna have uh, different comfort and ergonomics, and really different places in people's heart. Like, to be completely honest, the Super Cub is my favorite of the three, and I think it's because it just reminds me of the world of motorcycling outside the I don't know what it is it's this it's got this like otherworldly nature to it I love how it's designed I love how retro it looks and you know that's just so cool to me 
Whereas the Grom, which I still think is a really cool motorcycle, is probably the last one I'd pick of those three. But take that with a grain of salt. It's certainly not to say I don't like the Grom, because I really do. I think it's more to say that I absolutely adore the fact that they've brought back those older bikes this year. So cool. All right, guys, so we are heading back to Blackman's Cycle Center here in northern Philadelphia. This is much more north of Philadelphia in Emos. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So if you're from the area looking for a Honda Grom, as well as a number of other power sport items, please check them out. They'll be linked in the description down below. And if you're not from this area, please hit that first link in the description. Go to GoRollick.com and see if you can't find one of these cool little Groms in your area. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, like it, comment down below, start a conversation with somebody. If you have any questions, questions, comments, concerns. That's what I'm here for, man. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Peace. You do what you want. You do what you need. Just don't let this get back to me.